Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now just to give Him the thanks, just to give Him the praise, and always give Him the glory. I can't do it without you, Jesus. I can't make it without you, Jesus. I can't even comprehend without you, Jesus. I can't even make it without you, Jesus. I need you every second, every minute, every hour of my of my life, God. You are my healer. You are my provider. You are still on the throne. You are still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, you continue to have your way with myself. You continue to have your way with my sisters. You continue to have your way with my brothers, Father God. You touch us right now the way, God, that we know that you, in the way that we know that we need to be touched. Father God, you know what we are hurting at, God. Heal us right now today, God. Provide for us right now today, God. Give us the strength that we need right now today, God. Father God, as we lift your name up high, God, because we know that you are so awesome. We know that you are so amazing, Father God. We know that your words and your promises last for everlasting and everlasting, God. You cannot go back on your word and you cannot go back on your promise, God. We know that you are God, that you do not make mistakes, God. So, Father God, whatever it is that you have showed us, God, it was something that we need to see. It was something that we need to pay attention to, God. And I'm so thankful, God, that you are opening our eyes right now today. I'm so thankful, God, that you are letting us be alert that what we need to see, God, because a lot of us right now today, we have been things that have been hidden from us in the dark, but your word say whatever whatever it is that's been hidden in the dark, that you will bring it to the light. So, God, we come to you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus as we lift your name up to give you the thanks and praise and glory, God. But, Father God, we do come to you right now today as we are sinners, God. We repent of our sins to you right now today. Father God, I'm asking in your name that anything that we've done wrong today in, in your eyes, God, Please forgive us. Wash us clean. Purify us right now today. If there's anything that we did wrong, God, in your heart that, that, that did not sit right, please forgive us. Wash us clean and purify us right now today, God. Father God, as we just repent of our sins to you today, God, we thank you for washing us clean. We thank you for purifying us, God. But Father God, we also say thank you right now, Father God, because your word said that you do not remember our sins anymore, God. And Father God, I want to say that I love you. I trust you. You're my everything, God. Despite what I'm going through, despite what I'm facing, Jesus, I'm trusting you. Whatever decision that you make, I'm trusting you, God, because I know whatever it is, the decision that you're making for myself, my sister, my brothers, it is the best decision. It is the right decision. And we'll never question your decision because you are God Almighty, our forever Savior. In Jesus' holy mighty name, amen, amen, amen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And I'm so thankful for the day, my brothers, my sister, just to do it back over again. I'm so thankful just to be in your homes, just to share another word today. And I just know right now, as the word of God says in Matthew 18, verse 19, where two or more gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. So right now, our Heavenly Father God is in the midst right now through our television set. He's in the midst right now through our phones. He's in the midst right now through our laptops, or our, our, our computers, or our iPads, or whatever gadget that y'all have right now today that y'all on air watching Jesus' YouTube channel right now. Jesus is in the midst right now. Jesus is in this house right now. Jesus is moving through this house right now. He is touching us right now. He is healing us right now. He is providing right now. He is moving mountains on our behalf right now today. And sometimes we don't even realize what God is doing because God is always up to something for those who love and cherish him. And I believe right now today that God is moving in our life. I believe that God is doing a new thing in our life right now today. So get ready for the outcome because God is about to show up. He's about to show out. And he's about to take you to he about to take you to some places that you never thought or even imagined that you will be at. Because our God is awesome. He's amazing. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He never changes up. And you can always count, depend, and rely on him. Amen. Amen. Let us pray before we get in today's word. 
O Heavenly Father God, I come to you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this blessing. I thank you for this breakthrough. I thank you for this miracle. I thank you for this anointing. I thank you for the for this um deliverance. I thank you right now, Father God, because you are touching us right now. You are healing us right now. You are guiding us and you are directing us, God. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity right now. I thank you right now that myself and my brothers, my sisters, that we can come together and have fellowship in your sanctuary right now today. Father God, I thank you, Father God, how you about to speak to us. I thank you how you about to give us um your word that you about to speak to us through your message, God. We thank you how we about to be full and satisfied through this anointing message right now today, God. And Father God, despite what we are going through or what we are feeling right now today, God, because some of us right now, we are hurting, we are suffering, we are struggling, God. And you know exactly what we are going through, but I know that you are touching us in every area right now today, God. And you are removing that pain. You are removing that burden. You are removing that suffering and that struggle. Father God, you continue to have your way with my sister. You continue to have your way with my brothers. You continue to have your way with me, God. Father God, we take no credit for what's what about to take place or go down in your house right now today. Father God, you deserve all the thanks, you deserve all the praise, and you deserve all the glory, God. Father God, we want to say we thank you and we love you. And Father God, we give you all the thanks, praise, and glory. And let the church say amen. <clears throat> amen. Before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this came thanking up for this awesome and beautiful blessed day. I can't thank enough for this word. I can't thank enough for this anointing message. I just can't thank enough for the air that we're able to breathe right now. I can't thank enough for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank enough for your love. I can't thank enough for your protection. I can't thank enough for your healing. I can't thank enough for you providing. I just can't thank enough for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on that table, the clothing shoe that you have put on that back. I just can't thank enough, Father God, how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today. I can't thank enough for your words. I can't thank enough for your promises. I can't thank enough for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now today. I can't thank enough for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now today. I just can't thank enough for your love, God. I just can't thank enough for everything that you have done and everything that you are doing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I can't thank enough for our blessing. I can't thank enough for our breakthrough. I can't thank enough for our anointing. I can't thank enough for our deliverance. I can't thank enough for our double portion. I can't thank enough for our more than enough. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the overflow. I can't thank enough for the rain. I can't thank enough for the open doors. I can't thank enough for the door that you have closed. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 Jesus, I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Good God Almighty, I just can't thank you enough. In Jesus' holy mighty name, amen and amen and amen. I just can't thank you enough. Good God Almighty, I just can't thank you enough. Amen? Amen. Can you please turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 27. That's Isaiah chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 27. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Glory to God. In that day, their burden will be lifted from your shoulders. Their yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because you have grown so fat. And I'm speaking on today's word today. Something happened. Something happened in your relationship. Something happened at that job. Something happened in your marriage and you don't even realize what it is. So I'm going to speak on something right now today to to enlighten some of my brothers and my sisters right now. And there's some you know right now today who's been watching me, who's been following Jesus' YouTube channel. You notice that I've, I've been speaking on that I've been, I'm going through a divorce right now. And in my divorce, I would have never known I was going through something. This morning, God has been revealing everything to me what was happening. 
I couldn't see it in the beginning, but now God has opened my eyes and let me see what was happening. And when I came to my prayer room this morning and, and I was reading, this is the first thing that I saw. He said, in that day, their burden will be lifted from your shoulder. And when he said their burden, it's the person who was holding you down. It was, the, it was the person who was holding you back from getting to what you would need to get to. So the moment I took my wedding ring off, the moment I took it off, it's like the shoulder, the, the bricks in the houses and whatever it was that was on my shoulder, it crumbled. It's like I was set free. The chains were broken. I was loose. It was their burden that was holding me back. It was their burden from you not going through what you was going through. It was their burden for you for you not to prosper in life. And a lot of you right now today, you don't know what it was, but something was happening. You was carrying the weight while they were sitting home. You was doing all the work while they were just getting by. But the word of God tells us in 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10, if a man don't work, a man don't eat. So if a man and a woman don't work, they don't eat. So they need to get a job. So, but it was you who was paying all the bills. It was you who was carrying away. But in the moment when God opened your eyes and he revealed to you what, what it was, and you say, that's what it was. So at that moment, the word of God said, in that day, their burdens. So it was their burdens that was weighing you down. It was their burdens for you not going to where you need to go at. It was their burden for you not making what you need to make. They was holding you down. They was, they was, they were trying to stop you. But when God opened your eyes, and let you see what you need to see. And you say enough is enough. Right then and now. God was saying you were set free right then. The chains were broken. And that's how I felt. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you my brother and my sister. That's one thing I did not want to do. I did not want to take my ring off. I did not want to go through what I was going through. But at that moment. When God revealed to me. The hidden secrets. The hidden agendas what she had and what she said about me, at that moment I took it off, it just felt like like I was a bird. I was able to fly again because for a while I was not able to fly. It was that heavy burden that was on me because I was carrying all the weight. I was drowning. And I don't know why I didn't drown all the way down because my Heavenly Father God was able to help me stay afloat even though they wanted me to drown. Even though they wanted you to drown. Even though they didn't want to see you prosper. They was taking something from you. And you didn't realize. So that's what happened in your relationship. That's what happened in your marriage. That's what happened in that job. They didn't want to see you move. So uh, another person burden can become yours, your situation. But when God revealed it to you, open up your eyes and you will see what was going on the whole time. And I know it took y'all a long time to figure that out because it took a long time for me to figure that out. I went through this for a year and a half. I didn't work one job. I didn't work two jobs. I worked three jobs every day, seven days a week. I was making a sacrifice, not for me, but for my family and my marriage because I had a commitment to God. That I was going to be a provider. I had a commitment and I made a vow to God through sickness, through health. That I was going to be there for my wife. But it was the burden that she didn't want to work. And it was time, my brothers and my sisters, that I didn't know if my life going to get cut off. I didn't know that my car was going to get repossessed. I didn't know I was going to get put out because I'm doing all this. I'm not doing this for me, but I was doing it as a sacrifice for love. I was doing a sacrifice for my marriage. I was doing a sacrifice for God. But God said, son, you're doing too much. She became your burden because she didn't want to work. It wasn't, she wasn't nothing wrong with her. She wasn't handicapped. She wasn't disabled. She didn't want to work because she knew that, that God was taking you. See why? She knew that it was something about to happen because at that point, she became your burden. Then when I had to open your eyes and let you see what you needed to see that day, I was released. I was set free. I was not in prison anymore. That's how I felt, my sisters. That's how I felt, my brothers. I got to keep it real with you. If I'm going to speak the truth, I got to speak this truth. If I'm going to preach the gospel, I got to preach the way they need to be preached. 
I'm not ashamed of what I'm going through. Yes, I'm hurting, but it's okay because my God is still healing me. And I'm still on this earth, still preaching the word of God for me to help somebody else that's going through the same thing that what I'm going through. We're going to get through this, my sisters. We're going to get through this, my brothers, because our God is still on the throne. And he's still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. You might not know how it's going to work out, but it's going to work out. You might be hurting right now. You might be suffering right now. You might be struggling right now. You might be going through a hard time right now. You don't realize what's going on but God said everything is going to happen so right now something just happened in somebody's marriage something just happened in somebody's relationship something just happened at somebody's job site and God had to open your eyes so he could see that what you was going through that's what happened and I like and he say in that day their burden will be lifted from your shoulders they, they yoke they yoke from your they yoke from your neck, the yoke will be broken. And see the rhyme, the reason why it was a yoke around your neck and the neck will be broke. The neck, the yoke will be broken is because you are going on one path, they was going on the other path. You was living in the, in the word of God, they was living in the world. And that's what it was my wife and I. I was in the word, she was in the world. So at, at, that, at that moment, we was already unequally yoked. I was preaching the word of God. She going to listen to Buddha boot music. I was doing what God called and chose me to do. She was doing what the enemy wanted her to do. So at that moment, we were still unequally yoked. I couldn't see it. I was trying to fix it. Trying to make it right. God said, you were doing too much. It was already broken, son. Because you were going down the right path. She going down the wrong, another path. You lost her a long time ago when you made that commitment to me. She didn't want that commitment. Her commitment was to the world. Your commitment to me was the word of God. Being a prophet, being a minister, that was your calling. That was your choosing. And you chose the right way. So at that point and at that moment, your marriage was already unequally yoked. So that's what happened. Your friendship was already unequally yoked. Your relationship was already unequally yoked. Your marriage was already unequally yoked. Your, your situation at the job was already unequally yoked. So that's what happened. That's why things started happening the way it did. It's because they became, their burdens became your burdens. And God said, that's enough. I'm not going to let you. Wear my son down. I'm not going to let you wear my son out. I'm not going to lie to you the thing that you're going to bring my son down because you are headed down that path and my son and my daughter is headed down the right path. So I got to remove it right now. I got to set it free right now. I got to break every chain right now in the mighty name of Jesus because you're going this way and my son and my daughter, they're going this way. They're going the way. They're on the path what I call and chose them to do. So that's what happened. And then what God was speaking to me today about. He said, son, that's what happened in your marriage. It was unequally yoked. She didn't want no part. She wasn't ready for what I called you to do. She wasn't ready for what I chose you to do. She wasn't ready for what I considered you to do. She had one foot in and the other foot out. God said, either you hot or you cold or you lukewarm. And if you lukewarm, God will spit you out. She was neither hot or cold. So she was unequally yoked to me. So that's what happened in my marriage. Her burdens became my burdens because she knew I was going to work. And she seen what I was going through. And God said, you know what? Enough is enough. This went on for a year and a half. This man is working three jobs, seven days a week. And I'm tired want to take a break, but I can't take a break because bills and bills and bills is coming. Bills and bills is accumulate, and she's sitting there, and I was seeing how the enemy was using my wife against me. I seen how the enemy was using my wife like a puppet against me, telling her, you're not going to get a job. You're going to make sure that Minister LT fail. You're going to make sure that he lose everything, but my God said, he's not going to fail. He's not going to lose everything because I'm his provider. I'm going to make sure that everything is going to work out, and it did the way it did. And when God took me to that closet and he revealed to me what I needed to see, all right, that's the hardest thing I want to do, my brother, my sister. I'm going to keep it real with you. I did not want to take that ring off. But it's like the moment I took it off, it's like a sigh of relief to say, whew. It's like I had 13 twin towers 
on the left and on the right side of my shoulder. And on the moment that ring went off, all of them collapsed. Wow. And I never felt that kind of feeling in my life before. I felt like I was a release date. It's like I've been in captivity so long. It seemed like I was in prison so long. And God said, now you are free. You are released right now. Every chain that you were chained up to has been falling off and just broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's what happened. That's what happened in somebody's life right now. That's what happened in somebody's relationship right now. That's what happened in somebody's marriage right now. That's what happened in somebody's job situation right now. It's because their burdens became your burdens. And they was already unequally yoked with you. So there was no good to you in the first place. That's what happened. I got to keep it real with you. And I ain't ashamed to say it. That's what happened. And think about this. I, this is the last. This is the good part of it right here. Because you have grown so fat. And it's okay. Sometimes, my brothers, we outgrow the people who we think supposed to go with us to the next level. We outgrow our spouse. And we do. And I know it's a hard thing to look at that because you, in your mind, as a man and as a woman, you say, you know what, I want to take my wife with me, I want to take my husband with me, and, you know, we're going to we're going to build this family, we're going to have this. But in life, my brothers my sisters, we outgrow our spouse. Some of our spouse don't want to grow. They want to stay in their same situation. They want to stay a midget, but you want to grow. And the moment that you are growing, that's when their burdens become a part of you. That's when they, that unequal yoke becomes. And when God sees that, he got to break that unequal yoke because God see you going down the right path they going down the wrong path and God said I can't have that my son and my daughter they are hot for me but they spouse or they friend or they boyfriend their girlfriend or their fiance they are they are lukewarm and God said I can't mess with that I can't even move with that so in some in certain situations we do I grow our spouse and God brought that to my attention this morning he said son you yeah, I grew her because he said, son, you got to remember, when you came from Charlotte, North Carolina, down here to Georgia, you was not preaching. You was in the world. You was smoking. You was drinking. You was cursing. You was selling drugs. You were doing all that until I touched your heart, until I showed you the direction or the right path. And when I chose the right path for a moment, she thought, okay, it was a phase. She probably said, well, he'll probably do it for three or four months. Oh, he'll go back. He'll go back doing what he's doing. I never, I never went back. I never went back. So at that moment, right then and there, her and I became unequally yoked. Then, I just can't see it. Her burden became my burden then because I didn't see it because she was not ready for what God is about to do for me. She was not mentally and socially, physically ready and prepared for this because it caught off God because she thought there was a phase. But I was already committed and dedicated to Jesus. That's what happened in my marriage. I ain't ashamed to tell you. That's what happened. I outgrew her. I was not the same person anymore. She was still used to seeing that, that, that street dude. She was still used to seeing that dude that was in the world. But this guy in the word of God, it was different. She was not ready for that. She was not prepared for that. And they threw her off course. And I outgrew my wife. I grew some lot of people that I thought was my friends too. We was unequally yoked too. So I grew them. I became fat. They would still want to be skinny. I was want to I was want to grow, but they would still want to stay. It said you want to grow, you want to stay. You can't have either one. It said you want to stay, you stay right there. But if you want to grow, that means that you gotta really you gotta get rid of some people who don't want to grow. Because at some point when you when you want to grow, you're gonna get fat. At one point in your life, you were skinny because you was in the Word. But when you was in the world, but when you got into the Word, you became fat because the Word became your food. It became your hunger. It became your thirst. And the more that you was wanting it, the more God was fi or help me with this Jesus. It was help. It was filling you up. That's what it was doing. Then God gave me another scripture. I'm telling you today, my brothers and my sisters, God has been, been revealing some things to me today, and he's gave me every scripture, word by word. He told me to go to Deuteronomy 2, verse 3. And as I went to Deuteronomy 2, verse 3, and I'm talking about the, at the NIV um, Bible, because that's why I read the NIV. Some of y'all read King James or whatever, but I'm reading the NIV. And the word of God say, how many times have you seen this same mountain? 
How many times have you seen the same view? I said, God seen the same mountain, the same view, a hundred million times. He said, the reason why you still sin because they don't want to grow. They still are comfortable right there. So now God said, now it's time for you to, to just drop this and go to the other side. Because the moment that you continue to see the same thing, they mean they don't want anything out of life. They still stuck right there. You have grown fast. So God said, now it's time for you, my brothers. It's time for you, my sisters, to go to the other side. So basically what God is saying, you have outgrown some people who you thought was supposed to go with you. Everybody's now welcome to the next journey. Everybody's now welcome to the blessing. Everybody's now welcome to the promised land because you have outgrown a lot of people. There was unequal yoke towards you. They burdens is that is not your burdens anymore. They problems is not your problems anymore. They concerns is not your concerns anymore. They situations is not your situation anymore because you have outgrown them. And God said, now you are set free. You are free at last, free at last. Good God Almighty, my brothers and my sisters. You are free at last. The chains have been broken from you. You are released right now. And a lot of you right now today, you don't even realize that you're released. So that's what happened. That's why you are feeling good. You might be still hurting about the situation because I'm still hurting about the situation. But you still feel good because you're not in captivity no more. They burn us and not your burdens anymore. They are not unequally yoked to you no more because God has broke that. God said he's tired of y'all. You looking at the same thing. You looking at the same woman, the same man, every day, every day for years and years. And he said, what you do you see? Have it moved? Have you seen a different view? Have you seen a different change? And I said, God, no, it's still the same thing. He said, that's my point exactly. You outgrew her. It's time to go. That's what happened. That's why I had to open your eyes. That's why I had to reveal it to you. Because it wasn't going nowhere. Some of you right now, when you can see the same thing at the job, that one guy said, okay, it's time for you to move to another job because that job is not going nowhere. That job is not going to take you places. Then when God said, okay, you tired of saying, hang with the same friends, they mean that friend don't want none of the life. That friend want to continue to smoke and drink and get high. God said, it's time for you to move. When their relationship not going nowhere, God said, they don't want that. But to sit down, they want, they want people to lay up with them. God said, the sex does not satisfy anything. Flesh does not stick to anything. Sex and flesh does have no foundation. Foundation. God said it's time to move when your marriage is still looking the same thing. God said he don't believe in divorce, but God did divorce Israel. Then God divorced Sarah because Sarah kept looking back when Lot was on the assignment and Lot was on the mission. Then God said, okay, he had to make Sarah to a pillar of salt. So right now, a lot of your marriage right now is a pillar of salt because God said it's still looking the same way. It's still the same thing. It's still the same view because you have outgrown your spouse. That's what happened. I don't know who I'm talking to right now today. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now today. But that's what happened. And that's what happened to me. And God showed me this this morning. Do you know how many times I have read Isaiah 10, 27? I have read that scripture so many times, year after year after year. And I overlooked it and I overlooked it. God brought it to my attention this morning. He said, son, there's your answer right there. He said, there is your answer right now. Then when he gave me uh, 2 Thessalonians, he said, if a man don't work, a man don't eat. Look, you was working three jobs, nonstop, sacrificing your life and your body. Every day, tired, worn out, fatigued, tore up, want to take it down, but you couldn't. And still was not appreciative. Now, one time, God said, you was unequally yoked. You were living for the word of God. She's going to live for the world of nothing. Two different levels. You going down the right path, she's still stuck right there. Nothing. He said you saw the same thing year after year. Time after time. There was never no change. You kept looking at it. kept looking at it. It was no change. God said, how many times have you seen that mountain? How many times have you seen that view? God said, it's time for you to see a different mouth. It's time for you to see a different, view, a different view. Now it's time for you to go to the other side, LT. Now God is telling me to tell you right now today, my brothers, it's time for you to go to the other side. It's time for you to go to the other side, my sisters, because God said he's tired of you looking at the same thing. The same thing is not wanting nothing out of life. And I know that you love him and her, but God says something on the other side. Are you willing to drop it right now and follow God? Because right now, you really have outgrown your friends. 
You have outgrown your spouse. You have outgrown that job. You have outgrown your friends. You also have outgrown your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your fiance, or whatever it is. A lot of you right now today, you have become so fat, you cannot continue to hang with the skinny people no more. Because the skinny people don't want nothing out of life. They want to be comfortable where they at. But not you. You really have outgrown them. That's what happened. Now I hope this word, now I hope this message today has made sense to somebody today. Because I tell you what, my brothers and my sisters, it made a lot of sense to me. It did. It made a lot of sense. He said, dare, birdies. Dare, yo, who is there? The people that you was with. The people that you sleep with. The people who you say was your husband or your wife. That's, that's who there is. God said, you, yeah, I've grown them. And you have. I know that you want them to go because I wanted mine to go. I'm going to keep it real, which I did. God said, you came too fast, son. She still want to be skinny. She still want to look at the same view. You want to see a different view. That means that you're unequal yo. you go on this way. She want to go this way. She confused. One minute she want to be in, next minute she out. God said, uh-uh. But you're all the way hot, son. You're on two different levels. You're on two different paths. You want something. She don't want that. I know it's hard for you to believe it. I know it's hard for you right now. But son, you really have outgrown her. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we do. We outgrow a lot of people. A lot of people are not welcome and ready to go to the next level. Right now, God is telling me for the second time that right now, you are ready for the next level. And a lot of people that you are expecting that you want to go with you, they can't go with you because you have outgrown them. They're not on your level. You think different. You maneuver different from them. The third thing, God said, you are ready. You are up next. 2020 is your year. Your time is up to go to the other side. Because I'm going to meet you over there, my sisters. I'm going to meet you over there, my brother. Because the word of God tells us that. It tells us that. In the book of Deuteronomy 2, verse 3. How many times have you seen the same mountain? God said, how many times have you seen it? I mean, you've seen it, you've seen it, you've seen it. You're looking and you're looking at it. And God said, you don't think you're tired of looking at that same picture, that same view? God said, it's time for you to see something else. I'm tired of you looking at that. And a lot of we have been seeing the same thing for years and decades and it still haven't changed. It's still the same color. It still have not moved. God said it's time for you to see a different view because you have outgrown the person that you was with. Everybody can't come with us to the next level. Right now, we're up next for the next level. We're up next to go to the other side. And before I close, guess what? I'm going to meet you over there. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I was praying that simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always give Jesus thanks. Always give him the praise. Always give him the glory. Always put him first place. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and my sisters because the word of God tells us in Luke 18 verse 1, always continue to pray. Never give up. Always pray for your fellow brothers and sisters because you never know who need prayer. We all need prayer. This 7LT, I love y'all. Stay blessed. Amen.